Hi, it's Graham from Mowgli Adventures and today we're going to talk about the interactive RV wiring diagram. If you want to know how to go from this to this, then stick with me and I'll show you how we do it. head over to mogliadventures.com and under the books and tools tab you can select the interactive wiring diagram in fact you can select the bundle which will give you the handbook and the wiring diagram uh, if you really don't know your way around uh, camper van electrics so having downloaded the interactive tool you also need to head over to adobe and download their pdf reader if you try any other aftermarket products it doesn't work so well so we're using adobe products and we found that that gives you the best results once you've downloaded both the adobe reader and the interactive tool you can start it up the first few pages are all about how you would use the design tool and we get to the first part, part one. We're setting up the basics of our design. So firstly, I have a camper name. I'm going to call this project is the uh, Renergy Upgrade, which is what I'm actually doing, but you can call yours whatever you want. Uh, my supply main, my main supply voltage is uh, 220 to 240, but you have the option here to choose 110 to 132. So depending where you're on the world and depending on uh, what you want as your base voltage, you can select that piece as well. The next piece we're going to do is around uh, our preferred measurement scales. And here you can see the sign meters, but you can choose feet. And what this is all around is around trying to work out the correct wire size for the appliances uh, and the services that you're going to install. And by using feet or meters, the, the, whichever you, you, you prefer to measure in, we can work out the wire size, both in terms of a safety factor and also in terms of an efficiency factor. So uh, again, you'll need to know the lengths of your wires as you uh, design your system. We, we also can choose the wire scales. So again, in Europe, we are going to use the millimeter squared, but in North America or other parts of the world, the, we can use AWG or the American wire gauge, whichever you prefer. Now, if you get through the design and then later on in life you find actually you can only get millimeter squared or you vice versa, you put it all in millimeter squared and you want to use AWG, it's okay. Just come here and check the button and it will change over and give you the exact sizes in line what you've, uh, with, with the le lengths that you've already stated. So we can choose between 12, 24 or 48 volts as our base system. Um, the batteries are wired in parallel on the diagram. If you need to add batteries in a different configuration and you don't know what to do, please check out the handbook and that will guide you on some of the best ways and the best practices for wiring batteries. Having chosen your base voltage, I'm going to use 12 volts, we can go into the next stage, which is about setting out our load. And if you all read the handbook and you understand the philosophy of Magnet Adventures, we're all about understanding how much energy we're going to use on a daily basis versus how much energy we can capture uh, on that day to replace the amount of energy we use. So a lot of people talk about big batteries, etc., but actually, no, it's all about how much you use on the day and how much can you get back. So first thing we start to do is list all our USB devices. I've got an iPad, I've got a phone got a Bluetooth speaker and I would charge them up every day and so I record them on this table here. If I wanted to add another phone, so I don't know, phone 2, all I would do is fill in the watts, 15 amp, 15 watts, uh, and I'm going to charge it with 2 hours a day and that's going to tell me I, do, I take 3 amps hours a day. If I don't know the wattage but I know the current for the device, and here at Google is your friend or the manufacturer's websites will tell you, tell you either the wattage of the machine or the amperage that they will use. Then you can use this device, this table here to calculate. So, for example, if somebody said it was 12 amps and we're running 12 volts, it was 144 watts. If I've changed my base voltage to be 48 or 24 volts, then the calculation will work on 24 or 48 volts that I have set on the previous page. 
The next pieces we're gonna capture is the things that we run every day on a switch. So our fridges, fans, diesel heater, diesel water heaters, etc. So having listed all these pieces, uh, you'll notice that I've got a water heater which hasn't got a number of hours running. And that's because I never run it on battery. It's too expensive in energy. I will run it on hookup. So I will have to wire it in. Uh, and this is part of the process. I'm gonna put in the size of that appliance, but I'm not putting the hours in. But later on, as we do the wire sizes, I will now have something to work with. Same thing for non-switched appliances. So my toilet fan, which is organic, runs 24 by seven. So that's running away. I've got cameras, which are timed to come on for security and night hours. And again, same thing, they will run off the battery. And I record them as well. Then we come to our AC load. And in this case, I've got a laptop, which is 60 watts, a camera. You may have a TV. I think a lot of these days, a lot of people these days are, are using an induction cooker. And let's put that induction cooker in for now. You can see the same process. Induction for a moment, I believe a good size one is 1600 watts. Uh, we're going to run that one hour a day, right? And on the right hand side, there is a series of tick boxes. And so here I'm going to simulate that actually these are the things that I'll run concurrently. So as you can see, I'm going to run my laptop while I'm cooking my dinner. That is going to take 247 amp hours of energy. So if I check down, then the next piece is about battery banks calculations. I've got a contingency of 10% here. You can have a 20%, 100%, whatever. The purpose, the purpose of the contingency is to uh, accommodate those days when you're not going to get an awful lot of sun. So the calculations on the latter parts of this work on purely solar power, power and not on driving or hookup. So if you were just living on solar power, this is where you would consider changing your contingency to be greater or smaller, depending on the weather that you expect to see. So you'll notice we've got lithium, AGM and gels, and there are two different values. The lithium is 440 amps and the AGM is 500 amps. And this is based on the load that we said we're going to use. Lithiums, you can use all of the energy in that battery, hence the 400 amps. But in AGMs and gels, you can only use 70 to 80% of the batteries. And therefore we've calculated the size of battery bank you would need if you were going to choose that type of battery. If you know which type of battery you're going to build, uh, it's lithium AGML gels, you can put that in and that will help with the calculations further along the line. I'm going with lithium at the moment. Our next part is about battery charging and this is the use of the alternator when we're driving. So if you have a smart alternator or if you're using lithium batteries, then you should be using a, a DC to DC battery charger. In the older earlier versions I used to be allow I used to say we could use a VSR but given the price of battery to battery chargers and the efficiency that they run I recommend we use a B2B charger these days rather than VSRs so now we come to the size of the solar panels that we can fit on our roof I can fit 400 watts on my roof. You might fit more, or you might only need a few less, depending on what the calculation is and how much energy you in plan to capture. So I put 400 in, you can change it down to any number that you want. And we need to look at where we're going to live in the world or where we're going to visit. So in the winter, I'll get one hour of peak sun, and in the summer, I can get four, maybe five hours. Let's say I'm gonna get five hours of peak sun. If you look at the world map, that's gonna give you a rough idea, but actually there are more accurate places to uh, get the amount of peak sun you'd get on a monthly or annual basis. And those links are in the handbook or on the website if you wanna go and find something more accurate. And it's probably well worth doing that because you're gonna get uh, a significant improvement or perhaps a not such good improvement with the numbers that you have. So uh, it's well worth doing that exercise to work out how much sun hours you're gonna get on an annual basis. 
because our next piece says to me, okay, so in the winter, I'm only gonna get 368 watts and 800, 1800 in the summer, but I, I need 5,000 watts per day. So you can see that I, because I've got red numbers, I'm in deficit for the winter, certainly, uh, but in the summer, and that's not great for me because I, I don't want to be in deficit in the summer. I should be positive because I don't want to be driving every day and I don't want to hook up. So I have to now go back and look at my load as to see why, what is taking so much of my energy up. And if I go back up, I can see straight away that the induction cooker is 1600 watts, far too much for me. I'm gonna take that out. Straight away, I've dropped that down. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be charging my camera for nine hours a day. I think I'm only gonna probably change it, charge it one hour a day. So I'm kind of dropping that right down. Uh, I can look at the other pieces that I've got going on here nothing significant so let's see where we sit now having reduced that load we can now see in the summer i'm going to have um, 12 amp hours of extra energy on a daily basis versus my load in the winter i'm going to be short so i need to think about how i'm going to manage that uh, whether i'm going to be driving or whether i need to hook up in winter months or better still move somewhere nice and warm why wouldn't you <laughs> So having put it all together, our next bit is about telling us what our recommended sizes for the equipment now. So here I only need 150 amp hours of battery. I've got 400 watts of power. power. I've said that's what I would do. So my MPBT controller is 40 amps. I only need a 100 watt inverter. My B2B could be 120 amps. And my battery charger should be 80 amps too. And again, these are based on the battery types that I have chosen. But life isn't like that. So we have kit already, particularly if you're doing an upgrade, or we want particular types of kit because we do, or, um, or things have just changed and we, we want to build in some contingency or some uh, future proofing in the life. So currently in my upgrade, I will be installing 400 amps of battery. Uh, my panels are 400, watts uh, 40 amp and ppt controller but my inverter i'm going for an inverter charger these days is a 2000 watt inverter my battery to battery charger is only 60 amps and my battery charger is 72 amps so i've gone and increased the sizes of all the components that were recommended and you can do the same or you can go smaller than was recommended depending on what you have. You just need to reset your expectations if you've gone smaller, but you may not get the performance that you're hoping for um, from the load that you've indicated you're gonna use. Now here we are, the control button. So, so far at the moment, you're gonna have a picture that is pretty much basic. We've said we're gonna use some vehicle charging, which is up there now. And we said we're going to use a battery charger, which you can see in an inverter. The reality is I'm actually going to add more now so I can add four solar panels I'm going to have two batteries uh, I'm going to have some battery protection and I'm going to use shore power and at this stage I'm not going to use an inverter charger I'm going to stick with a inverter and charger. Now if both this was zero and this was zero, then that inverter charger I just showed you would not be there. You don't need it. It wouldn't be there. Look there and there's removed because you're not doing it. But we are putting an inverter charger in, so put that in. And the battery charger, 72. And now you can see they've appeared. Magic. Having set up the bits that you think you're gonna fit, and you can come back and change this, and even if you do the design and build it and then come back later, later on next year and change it again, it's fine. You can just save a copy of this and, and modify the way you want.
if you recall, we, we set up our things that are, that are going to run from a switch, like our fridge, our fan, our water heater, etc. So as you can see, now the next piece is about setting the length. As you can see here, um, I put some lengths already, but let's let's just see how this works. So I'm going to put the fridge in. It's a 10 foot cable run. That's 10 foot, which is positive to the appliance and back to the earth point. Uh, I've got a four amp fuse because that's the size of the load. And it's telling me I need a 16 AWG uh, wire for cable for that. You can see I've got a water heater and it has a 68 amp relay. And that's because the switch size I've got a 20 ounce switch here, but you could have 10 or 12, depending on those switches that you choose, um, is not strong enough to allow the water heater current to flow through it. And so in those cases, we use a relay, and a relay is very simply a very heavy set of contacts that is operated by the switch, so a small on and off current. And um, the way that this means is that we now have two circuits. So we have a switch circuit, which says put power on to the contact, as in this diagram. The contact forces the main cables to run together. They will provide power from the battery through to the appliance, and the switch will take the contacts on or off. Um, and so when we come to the diagram, I'll show you this, we have a control wire, which is a very small current, and the main contact and supply wire for the appliance. So that's how we just demonstrate having the need for a relay. Same for the toilet fans, they're longer distances now. And, but again, small current, so small ones. You'll see all the major components, which generally are high current usage. Uh, we try and put them as close as possible to the battery supply for two reasons. Firstly, um, we need larger cable to allow the current to flow from the battery to the unit or the unit to the battery and so larger cable is very expensive so the larger the cable the longer the runs the more expensive it will be but also um, the cables are inefficient and so the longer the runs the more energy will dissipate over the length of that run and so we're wasting energy and again we've set it so there's a three percent loss across the um, network but again it's super important that you try and keep it everything as close as possible to the battery hence the short distances so now we have a fairly completed diagram on the left top left hand corner we've got the voltage coming in an ac component uh, and i've used the t um, a double pole relay supplying a buzz bar. Now there are different regulations around the world so please follow the local regulations and if you're not sure there is no shame in getting uh, a qualified electrician to help you. That's supplying the battery charger in this case and the battery charger is then providing power to a buzz bar, a positive buzz bar. The vehicle charging again through fuses is supplying power to that positive bus part as well as the solar panels and we've got saw four solar panels going through a controller and again that is feeding energy to the bus bar the bus bar is then going through a large fuse and that is through the isolator to supply the battery uh, the battery bank so with the batteries uh, and the earth link we suggest that you use four slash zero eight or g or 107 millimeter squared size links or cables the battery isolator feeds back to the bus bar and supplies um, two outputs. One is to the inverter, which is here 168 amps going in and using 2 slash 0 AWG in this example. Uh, and the 100 amp fuse going into the main supply. So having supplied uh, the main distribution network on the left hand side, and as you can see we have a series of switches and fuses and a fuse blocks. Now I'm using an intricate fuse block, something that similar to the one you would see in Blue Sea, uh, but you could use a collection of fuses. The key here is to know which fuse works for which circuit so that you get the right size fuse. On the left hand side, my fuse block is providing power to a series of switches and as you can see third one down I've got a water heater at 16 AWG remember I talked about the 
relay for the water heater. So that's sitting there. Coming out of that bottom of that fuse block, you can see on the left-hand side there is a water heater with a relay 68 amps, a fuse of 30 amps, and a T10 AWG to wire size. And that is the relay circuit um, that will be running. And beneath that, if you can see along the bottom of the information bar, is exactly uh, is a similar wiring for a relay uh, relay unit and how that works. So there's um, a second view to see how it work, hangs together. From the top hand, right hand side of the uh, fuse block, you can see the USB circuits and the toilet and the fans. All the circuits run back to the negative buzz bar, the ground buzz bar, uh, where everything is attached and into the earth. It's from there, if you've selected a battery monitoring system, uh, you'll see that that's where you would put the shunt between the earth ground or the earth point and the negative side of the battery. You'll also notice if you follow the wire through that at the beginning of the distribution box is your battery protect. So if your battery voltage is dropped to a certain level, that will open and that will prevent all the appliances from operating. So those are the two controls. Generally, that's where you find them. Uh, the manufacturers may have a different idea and therefore follow those local instructions. So this is the system in its simplistic form. Now let's have a little bit of a play here. So I'm now going to change it and I'm now going to say, right, I'm going to install my four batteries and I'm only going to have two solar panels. Uh, I'm going to keep, I mean, I don't want the protection. And um, I'm not even going to use shore power. Yes, I am going to use shore power, sorry. Um, but uh, I'm now going for an inverter charger. And immediately, you can see the difference now. Uh, power coming in from the distribution box into the inverter charger and power going back out. And this now is pulling uh, energy from the battery from the bus bar or providing energy to the bus bar depending on whether it's charging or inverting. Need to be careful with these because a lot of inverter chargers now have uh, facilities to auto start generators and also to provide um, uh, content, um, uninterrupted power supplies and so it's possible if you don't know what you're doing to connect shore power your inverter charger and the generator are all on the same power supplies uh, and you need to be very careful you don't do that because that will be a very bad day for everyone. So again, follow the manufacturer's instructions or if you're not sure, get a qualified engineer to help you. Now you can see also on the right hand side, I've only got two um, solar panels, but I do have four batteries. My battery protect and my battery monitoring is no longer there because I said I didn't want them. So. You can change and play with it. You can add more services or more appliances or more solar panels and all the things that you want to do. So it's fairly flexible in, in that sense to set up and it will provide you the diagram that has um, the wire sizes. There's some wire numbering to follow if you want to. So if you need any more advice or information on using this tool, please contact us via the website or you can join the Campervan Electrics Handbook Facebook group where we will answer any questions that you may have. So I hope this is explanatory to you. It's certainly a very simple tool to use and it will make life very easy for you in the design of your RV Campervan electrical systems. In fact, it could even be used on a boat. Anyway, Thank you for watching and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye bye.